Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technically disadvantaged. Please remember to subscribe and hit that like button. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey, how do you turn this thing on again? In which a user is shown to possess Herculean strength. I've posted a few stories from my work here before. I'm currently a junior system administrator at a car dealership and have been in my position for a few years now. One constant in my time here has been interesting support calls. From oil change techs leaving oil hoses dangling above their laptops with predictable results, to someone attempting to copy an optical disc using a flatbed scanner. Recently I was offered my dream job as a real deal big boy system admin at a very nice company for more than double my current salary. So today I put in my two weeks notice. It was a bittersweet moment. I swear to you that I even began lamenting that I'd probably never get any tech support stories more ridiculous than any I had already experienced at this point. Someone in the accounting office must have sensed my sorrow and decided to give me one for the road. OP is me, EU is end user. I sit down at my desk with my morning coffee and prepare to take a sip. Immediately as the cup reaches my lips, my phone rings. OP. Good morning, this is OP in the IT department. How can I help you? End user. Hi OP, I brought in a wireless mouse and keyboard set that my husband got me today and it doesn't seem to be working. I plugged the little thingy into the slot and made sure everything had batteries and was turned on, but my CPU won't see it. OP, maybe the receiver? That little thingy you plugged in didn't get seated into the USB port properly. Can you try removing it for me, plugging it back in, and telling me if any messages pop up on your screen? EU, sure. End user, sets the phone down at this point, and in the background I can hear sounds of physical struggle. I begin to get worried. End user, how are you supposed to get it out once it's in? OP, well, you should just be able to grab it and pull it out. It shouldn't take a lot of force at all. End user, there's not really anything for me to grab onto though. My spidey sense begins tingling at this point. An event has occurred. I should probably walk up and continue the service in person before any further events have a chance to manifest themselves. OP. Huh, that's strange. Hang on one moment. I'm going to come up so I can see what's going on. I make the pilgrimage to accounting and arrive at the workstation. The user has inserted the USB receiver, but they then just kept going. The USB receiver is now flush with the front bezel on the computer's case. <laughs> that is, the USB receiver has been forced into the USB port hard enough that it completely destroyed and displaced the USB port on the front of the case. Hence, there was nothing left for her end user to grab onto to pull the receiver out. I don't want to immediately break the bad news. I don't know how to. I need some time to think. I ask a question to buy time. OP. Interesting. If you don't mind me asking, how did you go about inserting the receiver into the USB port? End user. Oh, you know, I just kind of put it in and tapped it a few times. It's worth noting at this point that end user is a 55 plus year old accounting lady. And if I am to believe her, she has tapped it a few times with enough strength to completely destroy the USB port. I decide that I do not want to anger this user. OP. I think that USB port must have been on its last legs for some reason. It looks like it failed somehow. Let me plug it into one of the ports on the back of your PC for you. You've got to really try to jam one of those in that far. Good job keeping your composure, OP. That's no chicken. Years ago, in the mid to late 90s, as a teenager, I worked in a multitude of different retail jobs. For a couple of years, I worked in a local computer shop that did both PC sales and repairs. I worked in sales, but as we were a small company, I often ended up either building PCs or helping to fix them. One day, a chap, let's call him Mr. W, came in with a PC we built for him a few months ago with a complaint that it wouldn't turn on. I popped the case open in front of him and immediately saw the problem. The cable powering the motherboard was loose. I gave it a firm push back in, hooked it up to one of our monitors and keyboards to test it, and all was fine. All this done in front of the customer, where I showed him what I was doing and generally chatting with him. Turned out that he'd moved the computer that morning and that's when it stopped working. I popped into the back to ask my manager how much to charge. How much do you think, OP? Um, nothing? I fixed it in five minutes, it's under warranty probably caused by how it was put together and we want to keep him as a customer. Good lad, chuck him a mouse pad to keep him sweet. So I gave Mr. W a mouse mat and asked him to sign a form to say that a warranty repair had been made and sent him on his way. Fast forward three months. 
One of my colleagues, Dave, not his real name, got a phone call. Hello, ex-computers, how can I help you? Said the politest English telephone voice. You've put a chicken in my computer! Screamed the extremely angry and hostile Mr. W. I'm sorry, what? There's a chicken clucking in the computer, and your idiot work experience boy put it there. I wasn't work experience, but still quite young. I'm fairly sure that OP didn't do that. What exactly is happening? There's a bloody chicken in my effing computer! It keeps clucking! Fix it now! I'll see what I can do. Dave, with the patience of a saint, got the customer's details, checked the notes, including my note about fixing the cable in front of the customer, and tracks me down. Mr. W says you put a chicken in his computer. Know anything about that? Um, no? What on earth? Well, he's peeved. I'm going over to his house to have a look. So Dave goes over to Mr. W's house. About three hours later, he comes into the shop, tears of laughter streaming down his face. Turns out that Mr. W is a bit of a hoarder, and that the PC tower was under a huge pile of unopened mail. While excavating it to have a look, with Mr. W looming over him, he heard a forlorn beep coming from the pile. Did you hear that? That's the chicken! Told you there was a chicken! You mean that beep? It was a cluck and you know it! Dave carried on his excavation when he hears the beep again. Only this time, it was from the pile of posts that had been moved. Mr. W screamed, How did you move it? So Dave starts scrabbling around the post until he finds the chicken. In a padded envelope that had been opened and then sealed again with tape. Can I open this? No, that's my post. You have no right to. Mr. W is cut off by another forlorn beep. This time from the envelope. He snatches it from Dave and rips it open. A smoke alarm falls out. Turns out that Mr. W had received a smoke alarm from the local fire brigade in the post around two years before. He'd taken it out of the parcel, put a battery in, and then put it back in the envelope with the intention of asking his son to fit it for him later. He forgot about it and it was soon absorbed by the clutter. The beeping was the replaced battery alarm. Dave, the ever helpful, after he finished laughing, popped out to get Mr. W a fresh battery, then installed the smoke alarm for him. Nice guy that Dave. Edit. So if you were asking about what Mr. W was charged, Dave made the decision not to charge him anything as it was clear that Mr. W needed help and not just with the computer. I didn't mention that Mr. W was easily in his 80s. If I remember correctly, Dave dropped in on him during this time off to check the computer was working okay, but actually just spent time chatting with Mr. W and making sure that he had someone regularly checking up on him. Fortunately, he did. He spent time showing him a few tricks on the PC and just listening to his war stories. As I said, nice guy that Dave. Call 911, not tech support. The call. Me. Thank you for calling IT, how may I assist you? Customer. The battery backup for the server is making a ton of noise and we can't get any work done. Me. Here's beeping in the background. Okay. Sounds like it might be running on battery. So I'll need you to go see if anything else is powered off. Can you look in the server room and read the message on the UPS? Customer. I can't go in there. Smoke is coming out of there. What should I do? Me. Hang up the phone, get everyone out of the building, call 911. Customer. But what about the beeping? Me. It sounds like you're in danger. Please get out and call emergency services. Customer. It's not that much smoke. Let me check anyway. Me. No, stop! Phone. Distant screams. Customer. There's a lot of smoke and the battery looks like it's on fire. Me. Hang up the phone and get the F out of the building. Needless to say, their server was hosed. Holy cow. Who worries about a beep when there's a fire? Wireless does not mean no wire at all. First time here, on mobile. And sorry if English bad, second language. I'm what we call a cable guy. Not the kind of tech support on phone we see on this sub, but I still do a lot of support face to face with the client. The situation just finished and writing this for my car. I'm still in shock. Another tech came here, maybe a week ago, to install the TV box and the internet. He told my client, 40 to 50 year old lady, that she can use the wireless now. He showed her the password and left. But now my client just remembered wireless, so she removed every wire she can find. The cable box, the router, the TV, the lamps, the toaster, the refrigerator, the list goes on. Everything was unplugged. 
She shouted at me for maybe five minutes because she lost a week's worth of food. While I was staring blankly on the floor, not knowing what to do. She wanted me to reimburse everything and to fire the other guy. At the end, I left her my boss's number, helped her plug back everything, and was able to explain the wireless. But the situation and all, amazing story that I needed to share. Too long didn't read, client went wireless too far and unplugged everything, even the water fountain for the cat. Alright everyone, I hope you're having a great day and that you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and keep a lookout for more of these little gems from Reddit. So long!